Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to be doing the Star Table Runner. Now this is calling for Aunt Lydia's Fashion number three yarn. And what I've decided to use is use a Lily Sugar and Cream and I used a four millimeter size G6 hook in order to do it. So there's my hook. So this hook that people ask me about it, I just got it on Amazon. It's just a generic and I'm from Canada. So that's where I found it. So what we have here is that the stars are made up individuals that, you, that you'll see and they're joined as you go so you don't need to sew them together so you just got to strategically put them together at the points uh, when you go to do so and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So you can see here is the layout on page number two of all of the different ones. So if you want to add more stars or take away stars to match whatever you're deciding to do you can easily do that there. So it's just a matter of strategy. So without further ado we're going to just show you the sample that we're going to be adding to and we'll be going from this point. So here's a couple stars already done. You can see that they're joined at the points right here. So you just keep on joining things in order to make it happen. So um, this is a nice, easy way to do things like this. And uh, I think it's gonna be quite awesome. There's also a diagram on page number three of the pattern as well, of the actual stitch work itself. And we're going to begin our journey. So let's grab a yarn and hook now. I'm just gonna be using Lily Sugar and Cream just with this color, I believe it's called Beach Glass. And I'll just show you so that it's easier to see where I'm sticking my hook. So let's begin and we're going to chain a total of four with our hook. One, two, three, four, and slip stitch to the beginning chain to form the ring. And just keep the straggler on the outside with the ring so that you can trap that underneath. Let's begin round number one. This star is six sided, so just keep that in mind. So you're gonna start with chaining of two and you're going to double crochet into the center of the ring. And pull through two and two. So by chaining two and doing this, you've just done um, what is called as uh, like a cluster. So now we're gonna chain two and we're gonna do the next cluster. So in the center of the ring, go right up over top of the straggler, yarn over, going into the ring, pull through, pull through two and hold, and then yarning over into the ring again, pull through, pull through two and hold. And then pull through all three loops. And that was a, a DC cluster. So carrying on, you wanna chain two and do another DC cluster. chain two and move on. So how many do you need to see? You need to see six of these. So carry on around until you do have six done and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming around and I can see six points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't forget to chain two after that last DC cluster and join it to the top of the first cluster that you started with. Now, if you went over top of your straggler, Okay, that's the loose end. All you just need to turn it around is just safely just cut it right there. And turn it back over and let's get ready for round number two. Let's start your next round, round number two. Chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the top of this cluster. Then chain three. One, two, three. And in this space, you are going to put in a treble cluster. So how you do that is you wrap twice this time and into the space, pull through, and then pull through two and two and hold. Do the same thing in the same space. So wrap twice and pull through, pull through two and two. Once you see three loops on the hook, you're done. So yarn over, pull through all three, and then chain three to get ourselves back down to the top of this cluster here. So one, two, three, and single crochet in the top of the cluster. I'll show you one more time. So start another one, chain three, and then a treble cluster into the space right here. Wrap twice, pull through, pull through two and two and hold, and do it again. Pull through, pull through two and two. And once you see the three loops, pull through all three, and then chain three to go down to 
to the next cluster in single crochet. So please do this all the way around. You should see six sets of these in the circle. I'll be right back. Now coming around the last one, we need to finish this slightly different from everything else. And what we have to do is that once we have the cluster ready to pull through all three, we want to hold. We don't want to do that completely. And what we need to do is do a double crochet to the top of the first cluster that we have started with. So we're going to wrap once and going into the top of the first, pull through, pull through two and hold. So you should have four loops on the hook for the very last one. And what this is going to do is that you're going to pull through all of it. And so you still have your cluster, you still have your chain three equivalent with this double crochet, and this allows you to finish off and it will look proper. So let's move on to the next round. So let's move on to the third round. You're going to want to chain one, and then in the top of the same spot, you're going to single crochet. This is a really easy round that you're about to do. So all you need to do is just chain two. So one and two, and in the single crochet between the points, you want to apply one treble chain three and one treble into the same spot okay and then chain two and then single crochet to the top of the next cluster so just remember, it starts off with chain two, treble in, chain three, treble in, and then chain two, and then single. So let's show you one more. So chain two, and treble into the next single between the points. Chain three, and treble into the same point, and chain two, and single into the top of the next cluster. And I need you to do that all the way around, and I'll be right back. When you get back around, don't forget to chain two after the last treble to join it to the first single crochet. And we're going to move on to the next round in a moment. So this is the second last round. And the next round, what we're going to do is do the final and attach it if you need to. So let's begin this round first though. We're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the top of this cluster. We're now going to chain two and in the top of this treble here, you're going to double crochet. You're then going to chain two and in this space, you're going to do the treble cluster like you had been done before. So you're just going to wrap twice going in pull through, pull through two and two and hold, do it again. And once that you get the three loops, pull through and then chain three and you're not done with the space. You're going to do another treble into this uh, treble cluster into the space. Oops. Make sure you wrap that hook twice. through and now we're going to start coming down the other side so we want to chain two first and we're going to double crochet into this treble chain two again and then you're heading in between everything so you're going to single crochet here into the next single and let's just review doing one more uh, point so you'll chain two to start double crochet into this first treble that you'll run into. Then you're going to chain two again and do a treble cluster into this space here, the chain three space. Once that's done, chain three, that's the point. And then coming back into the same space, do another treble cluster in. Chain two, double crochet into the next treble that you see right here. Chain two and single crochet in the next single. 
Okay, and that's how you're gonna go all the way around on this one, and I'll see you at the end of the round. So I'm coming all the way around, got my chain two, and I'm gonna just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. So now we're gonna just cover it right side, wrong side. We're also gonna take a look at a diagram next. So I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. If you're new to crochet or you cannot tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side, they have a very unique difference of the way that they look. So let me just pull up my hook a little bit. So this is the right side of the work. This is the side that we've been working through. The other side is called the wrong side. Do you see how different it looks? Just look. Okay, so if you cannot tell the difference, which is fine, what I want you to do is that I want you to put a spare piece of strand through some of the stitch work right here. So just get some of the stitch work up just with your hook. Don't try to rip apart your stitches and just glide a piece of yarn through. And so just glide it and let it hold. Now, if you're ever questioning whether this is the right side or the wrong side, when you turn it over, you don't see it. So this is the wrong side. So the yarn is on the right side of the work. And this may be very helpful because what you need to do is to make sure that when you go to put these together with its friends is that they're all facing in the same direction. So they're all facing right side, facing up. So we've been patiently working through this. We're going to do our last round, which is in the black here. And on its own, you can go all the way around and then you can just have this as a coaster if you wanted to. However, the very last points see here, these are what connect to each other. So you can start with your first one that will have no connections because it's your first one. And I'm gonna just quickly talk about that. And then what you can do then, once you have your second, third, and more, what you wanna do is join it strategically with each other by just going around the points that exist. So these points here, right, they'll be having three points. So you just gotta make it look good. Here's the thing with this kind of concept. If you decide to put your hook in a certain direction to connect, always put it in the same direction for everything so that everything is stabilized as you're working your way through so that the connections look proper. So let's uh, begin to show you how to do the final round and then I'll show you how to do the connection too. So I'm gonna get you started on how it's done without a connection and then I'm going to rip out. And I would strongly recommend to you that when you go to do this kind of concept that you want to uh, be strategic in your approach on how you're going to do that. So let's talk about that. So if you just wanted to do the very first motif or there's no joining and you just wanna use it as is, here's how you'll do it. So you'll just ch uh, chain one and you'll single crochet into the same single crochet that you did the join with. You're then going to chain a total of three. So everything is in sets of three here. So one, two, three, and you wanna to come to the top of the first double crochet right here. And single crochet in. And then chain three, one, two, three. And then you wanna come into the top of the next cluster and single crochet. So now we're going to chain three and then we're going to put a double cluster into the point. And so just wrap the hook, go in, pull through, pull through two and hold and do that again. Pull through, pull through two and hold. And you're going to pull through everything and you were going to apply then a pico. So let's do your pico. So you'll chain three. So one, two, three. And do you see how it's all joining here in those three? I want you to slip the hook in and yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook. And this is the top pico. Now, when there's nothing to connect to, it just sits like that, and then you move on to you coming down the next side. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, connect into the top of this cluster, and then chain three, one, two, three, and then come into the top of the double crochet, and then one, two, three, and then come into the single crochet. And so you'll work your way up the next side just how you just did that. So this is what it would look like if you're not connecting. So what I'm gonna do now is that you can do this whole round just exactly the same way you'll attach to the first one, slip stitch and fasten off. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to uh, join these two each other in the next point. So depending on where you're joining, this group here only joins to two points and you can work your way all the way down through the whole thing. And then in the next strip, what you can do here is that it will join here, 
here and here. So you see that these are slightly, um, they're joining at three points and they're just kind of filling into the space. So let's take a look at the real sample and let's talk about that. So these ones here are joined at the point. So you can just keep moving down and keep joining and etc. going down. So the next row that you'll have is that you want to be able to join it to each other. So you'll notice that in the diagram itself, there will be one star up here. So let's just say this is the side and this is the middle strip here. So what, this one will be joined up here and the next one will fill into the spot. And that's where I'm gonna show you it next. So the point here will connect, the point here will connect, and the point here will connect. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you in the next point of connecting to all three of these. So if there's only two to connect to, it's still the same instruction. It's just a matter of just where you're doing it and just refer to the instructions for the points. So let's do a point and connect it. So it's the same information. It's still chaining three from this uh, single crochet and you're single crocheting into the next double. And then you're chaining three and then you are working your way into the top of the cluster with a single crochet. Then chain three, come into the top point and you'll do a double crochet cluster. Okay, so you'll have a total of three loops and pull through all three. This time when you do the Pico, the chain three, it's gonna be chain one and you always want to connect in the same spot. So I come in from behind, I just lift it up and put the pico, center of the pico that is on the point here through the hook. And I yarn over and I pull through. This is considered number two. And then yarn over is number three. So it's still three, it's just the second one connects. Then you are going to slip stitch into there to form that pico and then start coming down the next side. So chain one, two, and three, top of the cluster, single crochet, chain three, top of the double is a single, chain three, and single crochet here. So now what we've just successfully done is attach one point to the other. So now let's attach this point to here. So we're gonna chain three, single crochet into the double, one, two, three, single into the top of the cluster, chain three, go into the space for the double crochet cluster. Chain one and then pick up here where it's joined this is two and three and this is a pico so you want to join it and then start coming down the other side so one two three top of the cluster one two three double crochet in the double or sorry single into the double and then chain three, single into the single. So now two points are connected. So if you have that issue of just doing two points, that's what it would look like. But in this case, we do want to go for that third point. So we want to go here. So we're going to head back up. So chain three, single into the double. One, two, three single into the cluster, and then one, two, three, and we're gonna do a double crochet cluster into the space. And we wanna join it again. So chain uh, one, just remember to keep everything consistent. Go through the Pico, this is two and three, and slip. and then come on down again. So just keep rotating things if it's easier. So one, two, three, top of the cluster. And then one, two, 
three. I don't know why I'm dropping my stitches. I know it's gonna dry pupa lots. Okay, coming on down and single into the single. So now you've technically joined all three points, just like that. So now the rest of the points, you don't have anything to join to. So I'll just show you one more time of doing a side without a join. So just chain three, single into the double, chain three, single into the cluster, chain three, double crochet cluster into the point. So on this particular one, you're only ever going to join to three sides at one time. So let's just chain three and then slip. And then this um, pico in the future will be used as a connecting point depending where it is in the pattern. So chain three to come out of there and go into the next cluster. Chain three. Single into the next double. Chain three and single into the next single. And so you can see this would be how it would be done. And it's a really not a bad pattern to do. And then what I'm just gonna do is show you how to fasten off your ends once you get there. To fasten off your ends, just leave a longer tail. You'll slip stitch to the beginning, single crochet, and then you're going to put it onto a tapestry needle. And just flip it to the back side and just put the um, yarn needle through. and pull that through. You don't wanna change the shape, so be taut, but don't be too tight. And then go back a second time. Make sure you try to split apart the fibers itself. Just don't go between the strands because it will hold better if you go between the, the fibers. And then just go a third time. And then that's just safely cut anything down right to the end of the project, like this. And this would be how you would complete the star runner. And it's a really neat idea. And I think it's a great little decorated pattern that you can pull out year after year. We hope you have a good one and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Want to know more? Hit that subscribe now.